Uh, finally, on to the S in HITS, heat pumps, insulation, triple glazed windows, and solar panels. So our solar panels were the second biggest contributor to cutting our carbon footprint. Uh, the, the biggest was the heat pumps. Um, they cut our carbon footprint about a third. Um, they save us the most money of all the things we did, about $5,500 per year. The net investment was the biggest of all uh, of all the things we did, about $40,000. That's net of the federal tax um, uh, tax subsidy and the Massachusetts state subsidy. Almost all states provide some kind of subsidy for solar panels. So depending on where you live, you can get the state subsidy plus the federal subsidy. Um, all those state subsidies are on that DESIRE website, D-S-I-R-E, the, um, uh, the database for um, state renewable incentives. Ours took about seven years to pay for themselves, and the return on investment is about 13% after tax. Now, those numbers all apply only to the cost savings, um, the amount of money we actually saved compared to the amount of money we actually invested. However, in addition to that and separate from that, the Department of Energy estimates our house prices increased because of installing the solar panels. This is based off academic research. It's not just an opinion. Um, that and the academic research was done by looking at houses with solar panels compared to comparable houses without solar panels and looking at the increase in the house value. And uh, they determined that the um, the value of the house went up by about $20 for every $1 in first year energy savings. And our, uh, using that formula uh, based off the 5,500 we have saved in energy bills, that's about $111,000 an increase in the value of our house. That is totally separate from and in addition to the cost savings I show in, in this slide. So if, you, if you're if you thinking, well, I really want to do solar panels, I know it's a good thing for the environment, I know it's a good thing for my wallet, but I'm going to move house in three to four years, that argument really is um, is cut down by this, this study that shows that you can recover your investment, in fact, more than your investment when you sell your house. So even if you're planning on moving in two to three years, it's still worthwhile to invest in solar panels. Uh, quickly, how solar panels work. Most people are fairly familiar with this. Uh, on the left-hand side, you've got the red, green, and blue light coming from the sun, hits the solar panel. That converts uh, the light to electricity. The electricity coming from a solar panel is the same type of electricity that comes from a battery or that the type of electricity used in your car, which is, which is DC or direct current, uh, positive and negative um, uh, electricity. And that goes from the solar panels to an inverter. And the inverter converts the DC to AC power, which is what you need to run all of the appliances in your house. The, the grid feeds you electricity um, with, with AC or alternating current power. Um, so, the, so the AC power from the inverter goes to your meter. And when you install solar panels, the old meter will be taken away, and the new meter, which is a net meter, which measures the amount of electricity your house uses from the grid, net of the electricity you have generated from your solar panels. That's what's called a net meter. It flows both ways. Power goes out from your house to the street when, you're, when it's a sunny day, and when it's a cloudy day or at night, power comes from the grid to your house, and the meter measures the net amount of power and then you get billed for that net amount of power um, by your utility company. Uh, this is showing our panels and the day-by-day -day, uh, output of the, of the panels. And this is why net metering is so important. You will never be without power. Even if uh, you have a completely cloudy day, even if you've got six feet of snow on top of your panels, it doesn't matter. You will never be without power. Our panels produce about um, say 15 kilowatt hours per day in the middle of winter time. You can see at the left hand end of the graph there, it's about 15 kilowatt hours per day. And it goes up to about 70 kilowatt hours a day uh, on a day like today uh, in the middle of, the middle of um, uh, summer. In fact, it's going to be even, even better than that. It's a clear sunny day here in Massachusetts. So we will probably generate about 100 kilowatt hours of electricity per day, far more than we are using. And we'll probably only use about 30 kilowatt hours today. So that 70 kilowatt hours of excess power we generate above and beyond what we use is, is effectively stored by the utility company until we use it either at night or in the winter time when we don't generate as much power as we use. Now, of course, the, the, the utility companies don't really store it. It's not like they have giant batteries. They just reduce the number of coal-fired power stations or oil-fired power stations producing power 
for the grid at that time. And that's why when you put solar panels on the roof, you are helping the grid to go green because your power is being used by other people. Your zero carbon power is being used by other people, even when you're not using it, as long as you're generating more than you're using. Uh, this is a picture of our net meter. Remember I said the net meter measures the electricity flowing into your house, net of the power you've generated yourself. And you'd be forgiven for thinking that we have generated 99,999 kilowatt hours, but we have not. This was actually taken on the first day our solar panels were turned on. And this is showing the first kilowatt hour of electricity that we have generated. And that's because this is a net meter. When uh, electricity is used by us from the street, it goes up. So it goes from one to two to three to four kilowatt hours. When we generate more than we're using, it goes down. Now, net meters do not show negative numbers. So when you get to zero, it just goes around like your odometer on your car does. It goes back to 99,999. So this is actually minus one kilowatt hour generated. And it's the first kilowatt hour we generated and contributed to the grid. Um, let me do the financials for our first solar panel array. You'll see in a minute, I will just do our second solar panel array and show you um, how much better the economics have got in just the two years between our first and second solar panel array. So the gross cost, the checks I actually wrote to the installers were about $76,000. I got a federal tax credit on next year's uh, tax return. This was December 2016 was when we installed the arrays. I got that uh, tax credit on my April 15th tax filing for the year of uh, 2016. That was almost $23,000 I didn't pay the federal government. Massachusetts gave us a $1,000 tax credit. And then uh, I calculate here the present value, which means the value today of the Massachusetts SREC income. SREC has now been replaced with a program called SMART, which is a lot easier to administer. Thankfully, SREC was a, uh, a, a, a great deal of effort to administer properly. Um, but um, it actually comes in over 10 years. The income stream is roughly about uh, $3,000 a year for 10 years. And so I calculated here the present value. That means the value today of that income stream over the next 10 years, that's about $29,000. Subtract those all from 76, and you get $23,000 with the net cost of my solar panel array. Now, I, I prefer to view it in terms of cost per kilowatt hour because that's what I understand. I am paying Eversource, our utility company, about 24 cents per kilowatt hour for every kilowatt hour I, I use today. But I'm generating it at 7 cents per kilowatt hour. That is a huge reduction in the cost of my electricity and in my bills for my house. Uh, the, the cost per kilowatt hour is simply calculated by taking the uh, the cost of the array, $23,200, and dividing it by the number of kilowatt hours that is guaranteed to be produced by the panel manufacturers for my array. So a very simple calculation, but it gives you a number you can directly compare to what your utility bill tells you. The net present value, which is a financial term, which basically means total profit. The total profit on this investment is about $23,000 over the lifetime of the investment. The IRR or return on investment, um, IRR is a technical term, stands for internal rate of return. This is the proper financial way to uh, evaluate investments like this. This is, this. These are the same terminology that any uh, financial analyst or investment advisor or chief financial officer or chief executive officer of a company would evaluate investments. And that's 12% return on investment. The break even, in other words, how long it takes to get my money back, is about eight years. And this is not counting the increase in house price uh, from that DOE study I, I mentioned. So just remember these numbers for a minute. I'm now going to show you our next array, which I installed about 18 months later. And the gross cost was about $56,000. That's far less, let me just go back, than the $76,000 I paid for the first one, even though it's a slightly bigger array. 17.6 kilowatts compared to 15.6 for the first array. The federal tax credit is 30%. The mass tax credit is still $1,000. The present value of the mass SREC income is now slightly less because the SREC subsidy got a little less generous between the first and the second array. The net cost, though, is $14,000. Now, let me just compare that to the previous array, $23,000. That's a huge decrease from a net cost of $23,000 to a net cost of $14,000. Huge decrease in the net cost of um, these solar panels after only 18 months. And that's basically because solar panels got much cheaper during that time. And uh, the subsidies remained pretty much the same. They got slightly less generous, but but not, not too much. So the cost per kilowatt hour is about six cents compared to seven cents in the first array. It's more profitable in the first array, a higher 
a rate of return on investment and a shorter uh, break-even period. And again, these numbers do not include that increase in the house value, but that is additional to these numbers. Um, so let me show you how I did the proper financial calculations for these solar panels. I found that solar panel installers did attempted to do similar calculations. I found um, if, if my financial analyst, when I was a CEO working for me, uh, gave me that level of information, they probably wouldn't still have a job. It was the, the very poor um, analysis of um, the financials. So I did all my own spreadsheets and calculated them how I would consider properly, uh, the way I was taught at business school, the way I actually did it in uh, in business for 20 years, uh, calculating the net present value, the IRR, the break even, and the cost per kilowatt hour. I did it by different uh, proposals from different installers, uh, different types of panels from different manufacturers, and evaluated them based off the warranties, and uh, which were in the, in the table below, and the uh, present value. The array we actually bought was the uh, one with the highest uh, net present value, the most profit overall. Uh, and that's the 46 Sun Power 345 watt uh, panels, which I bought from a company called New England Clean Energy. Uh, that is what they actually look like. You can see them on the on the um, the roof of our house. There, that was a picture taken by my son Jack from his uh, drone, about 100 feet above our house. Uh, and you can see these uh, very nice solar panels generating lots of electricity on a sunny day. Uh, for the details on how to perform those uh, technical and financial calculations of the solar panels themselves and the installers, please see the book. Uh, I also go through evaluating lease, loan, or cash purchase options and uh, how to obtain the subsidies and, and the low interest financing. Uh, that's all in the book, which you'll be getting at the end of this uh, webinar. Uh, 